you guys might be wondering why this video is started with me staring off to the side in silence. And that's because it is time that I want to announce my new YouTube. <laughs> guys, I am so excited for the release of this thing. This has been literally months in the process. I have been fine tuning this thing and designing this personally to make sure it's going to fit exactly what I want it to. And oh man, it does. What you guys are seeing right here is a new YouTube designed by myself. And I am so pleased with the outcome. This is going to be available for purchase on the YouTube's website on the 15th of July. So mark that on your calendars. One week from now, it's coming. As usual, this is going to be another limited edition product. So once all of these are sold out, that's pretty much all it's going to be, man. No more are going to be made. Something else exciting that I want to announce is that there is going to be a giveaway for you guys to win one of these for yourself. If you guys do want to win one of these for yourself, all you got to do is check that link in the description down below and follow any of the instructions that's presented. The more of these you go ahead and follow, the more chance you got of winning, but it's entirely up to you. Again, the release for the 8-Bit Ryan X Music Man U2s is coming July 15th. I hope you guys are really liking the design for this. I am seriously so proud of this one. It literally encapsulates so many perfect emotions from my playthrough. You remember my phobias and security breach? Yeah, now I got a still frame for the rest of my life that I get to see. All right, let's get on with this video anyway. Psst. Hey, they're here for the video. Oh, they are. Oh, hey, I, I didn't see you there. How are you doing? You, uh... You wait for me to do an intro, aren't you? So what is going on, guys? This is Ryan here, and welcome back to another game created by the dude who makes those, you know, the games with the rabbits that are like, you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Am I gonna keep that? Yes, I'm gonna keep that. This game comes from the developers of Beware, The Shadow Catcher, and also The Man in the Window. He's been making some really fun and interesting games, and I like what he's doing. How about we take a read of the blurb for what this game's about to be all about? JP, the Manda, has a problem. In his eyes, he's been swindled, with the offending party being none other than the local hospital, and by using the power of a ritualistic curse, he will have his revenge. JP, the Manda, it sounds like he needs stopping. Am I about to take that role? Don't really know anything about this game, and I have no idea what to expect, so for that, I think it's best we just jump straight into this. You want to play this game for yourself, and the link is always down below, and if you do enjoy this episode, yeah, you know what to do. Oh. Oh, it throws us straight in. Oh, what? Whoa. Hey, who the freak's this? You wanted to see me, Mr. Vermanda, sir? So we got Hannah. Mr. Vermanda sitting by the fireplace. Here we go. Slope. Wow, look at his dew. Hannah, why aren't this month's profits as high as last month's? I've been looking for that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like all the numbers on it. I can't make heads or tails out of that dang thing. They've raised the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to get your tax deduction. R remember, sir? They did what? When was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about it for the last eight months, but it's actually fine though. You still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get the deduction. So, with the good lord as my witness, I am being swindled. I will not stand for this. No one gets over on GP Vermanda. No, sir. Not now and not ever. But, 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 sir. Now then, where have I been donating all my hard earned money to again? The, the, the hospital, sir. Hospital? Which one? There's only one in town, sir. The only hospital in this godforsaken backwater town. And they still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money. <laughs> well, I know exactly how to handle this situation. Prepare the ritual, Hannah, and go fetch me my robes. The, the ritual? But Mr. Vermander, sir, please. This is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the, the, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir. Hannah, he ain't listening to you, though. That's nice and all, Hannah, but I don't remember asking. Now go. We don't have time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Uh, okay, sir. Wow. Mr. Vermander, we shut this guy down in- Bro, I'm stumbling over words. Instantaneously. We close him down. Another cutscene? So this is, this is the hospital. Okay, we got the rat. I mean, they say they're the cleanest animals. Hello? Hello? Anyone home? I hear ya, I hear ya, give a girl a minute. Someone's coming up. Is it gonna be the rabbit again? Oh my gosh, yo, look at that anteater, holy cow. Yeah? Uh, hello there, Dr. Ada, I, I presume? That's me, who's asking? Fantastic, I'm Morton, the nurse whose transfer request you received. Transfer request? What in the world are you talking about? Y you, you want to wear? Surely you've read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. The only thing we can get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't got that either. But if you're here to help, then I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to earn, so you better pay attention. Because I'm only saying this once. I I'm all ears, Doctor. Ladies kind of strict, but we're going to get through this. Here we go. Wow, we got lots of stuff here then. When the patients come in, I write their information down on this here clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use a computer instead? No. All right, go over there. Waiting room. Okay. The waiting room is over here. Ain't much to say about it. All the magazines are older than I am. And ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh, oh my. 
Yeah, well, people when they come in here mostly got concussions. They don't they don't care what they're reading, guys. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest ain't. Mr. Langboyd is over here in room 7A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Giles is in room 3A. She needed one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for anesthetic, so I gave her some of that old-fashioned medicine I keep under the sink. I, I have no words. She'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. I impressive. There's a woman over in 6A2. Poor thing cut her hand up real bad in the job. Then tried to hide it. A boss found out and sent her straight here. I ain't managed to figure out her name. So I wrote her down as Jane Doe and patched her up. Ah, mystery. I, I wonder who she is. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. We're here to help. Got it? Understood, Doctor. All right, so that's our objective. We got two bathrooms, an operative room, and some in like a kitchen. Oh, uh, excellent. Lights in here don't work half the time. Uh, oh, uh, an excellent. We can buy medicine supply in the OR, but most of the bottles are empty because the budget ain't paying to refill them. And there ain't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't even ever bother checking. Uh, oh, does anything in this hospital function as intended? Uh, no, not really. And that's about it. Wow, we, we're gonna, yeah, okay, we're dead. Let's head on back to the front desk so we can get you signed in and start your first shift. Yay! We're gonna be working at the, uh, the super budget, uh, hospital, where they literally do clearance sales on operations. That old sign shit is somewhat over there. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself, because I ain't about to come for it. Understood, doctor. I'll find it. In the meanwhile, I better go make my rounds and check up on the patients. Come get me if you need something. All right, so we are taking the old... Oh, all right, so we make our rounds. Hey, buddy, you don't look like you're doing too busy. Get to work, come on, man. Okay, let's do our rounds. So, okay, waiting area. We can actually look through here. It's so dark, though. Wow, man, we, we need more carrots in this universe so we can see what we're doing. Don't want to be leaving. So, we do what the lady said. We start doing our rounds. So, let's go 1A, 2A. I think they said 3A had someone in, so let's pop that door. How you doing? Good Lord, that's an axe a lot. Emphasis on a lot. How are you feeling, dear? Hey, Dr. Ada, what are you doing here? Still ain't sobered up yet, huh? Nope. That's fine, dear. At least that tooth ain't gonna bother you no more. Just give it some time and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. Okay, round number one done. We'll, uh, we'll leave you to it. We'll close that door. Um, all right, let's keep doing our rounds. Empty rooms. What's the danger, though? I'm just, I'm checking around here. This bathroom. We see myself. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey. Not gonna be making sounds like that. So 6A. We got octopus. Do you need some water, man? Like, hold up. You're, you're not gonna do so well. How you doing, dear? I'm, I'm okay. Hand is fine, no? You ain't got nothing to worry about. It'll re- Whoa, that thing came clean off. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest and I'll check back in later. You don't have to do Okay, you're done. Uh, yeah, okay. She lost her hand, guys. She lost her hand. I'm gonna close that door and not go in there again. You say 70? Um, uh, so hey, guys. Uh, what, what the freak? You're gonna kill me. Everything all right in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. <laughs> uh, see, he can't even laugh without it hurting him. It's exactly why I said, Lang, baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We can pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited until I left for work, and then he tried to get up there himself. One little gust of wind, and next thing you know, bam, straight into the hedges. You know, I could have gone into the wooden hut and picked up. Now, that's not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey, but we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now, you two try to take it easy, all right? I'll be back later on, okay? All right, that's everyone. I better go back and check on Mr. Morton. Please don't say he's a bag of bones right now. Whoa, hey! Dr. Ada, the phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. And the caller won't stop going on and on about rituals and demons, among other things I don't understand. I think that it may be best for you to talk to her. Ah, there's always something. Yeah, if it's not patients raking their legs and chopping their hands off, we got rituals and demons. Slow down, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. Please, you have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual, genuine demon, and you're all in danger. Uh-huh, and who do you work for again? J.P. Vermander, madame. Who is that, doctor? He's some rich city boy who moved out of here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's exactly him. I don't know what all of the details are, but there's a blood pact, and a demon, and a curse, and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't there no way of getting everyone out of here that fast. Oh, my goodness. I didn't expect the stakes to be so high on my first night, but I'm committed at this point. Yes! Mr. Morton coming in. Is there anything we can do to help our situation? I, I did go snooping into a few old journals kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to sunrise, the, the demon will leave. But there's a bunch of rules you'll need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down the nearest hallway in search of blood, specifically your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you, so keep those closed. 
Well, we'll bring you both in right now. The reception area. You'll need to keep that in mind, all right? Um, I, I, I wasn't listening. I'm not joking. I was more focused on doing the voices. When the demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual starts. Okay, so we have to be in the reception. If someone isn't, the demon will know. And once it knows where someone is, closing the doors won't stop it. If you're ready, I, I can tell you what to expect once the 10 o'clock hits. I ain't about to let no demon run rough shit over here in my house of healing. Just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's gonna happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? It'll try to use its powers to open the windows around itself. You're gonna need, and I cannot stress this enough, you're gonna need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. Leave one open, and that demon gets stronger. And you don't want that, all right? You finish with everything you need to do before the hour is up. Try staring at that clock. I'm sure it will help pass extra- What the freak? There's, okay. Stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck, and please be careful! I'm hanging up any moment, Hannah. You, you scream like that, I am not about to be doing with this. So, we go. We're, we're, yo, we're straight in, so close all windows. Look at the time when we're done. Every single one. Okay, we start at 1am, we work our way around. Um, that window looks good. So we go through. Uh, I ain't seeing no windows open. Uh, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, three. Ma'am, I don't, wait, there's no windows open. <gasps> I take that back. I take that back. Window closed right there. That was all good. He opened like one window. Nothing in that one. You guys didn't see no window open. 8 hey, let's pop it. Let's pop it. There's gotta be... The chair's tipped over, but there's nothing in there. Hold up. Maybe one of these check the kitchen. Okay, yeah, this room, no wonder there's no one in here. That's claustrophobic as free. Operating room. Uh, yeah, kind of glad there's no window. You don't want no one being like, Hey, I see you kind of open right there. All right, I think all the windows are closed. I'm panning between them all. There's only one, unless I've missed another room. Can't open that. I think we might be good here. Maybe it's time we stare at the clock. Let's do it. Yes? Ask any instructions? Nothing. Please be careful over there, okay? So we've done it. Hold up. Talk to this guy. Doctor. I uh, think usually this hectic around here. Not really. We usually ain't got no more than about one or two patients in here at once. But we got three in here tonight. That's not really what I meant. Yeah, we know what you meant. You meant the demons coming for us, didn't you? Dude, these windows are closed. Like, we're good. We're absolutely good. We're, we're, we're fine and dandy, man. Let's go. All right, it's coming round. It is coming round. We should be okay. So we survive until 11? The time was 11 p.m. All the windows had been closed. And then it arrived. But it didn't come through. I did my... Oh my gosh! Yo, whoa, this dude looks dangerous. <gasps> What's he looking for? Bro, leave him alone. They're good people. They're on the day of his accident, Lang Boyd's mind was not on the potential consequences of his actions. Far from it, in fact. His mind was instead on how happy his wife and children would be after he cooked their favorite dinner. A dinner that he could not afford to make unless he used the money he had saved by cleaning the gutters himself. The grandest intentions had now unintentionally doomed their entire family. If he had only just paid that original cash, bro. So, wait, can I stop them being, like, core like that or not? Oh, uh, what was that noise? Please, please tell me you didn't forget something. You can't let this thing do any more damage than it already had, so please try to focus and listen to this! This what's going to happen next. You'll be surprised how much this demon's power can resonate with electronics. It can gain access to into the telephone lines and try to gain power too! If you notice the phone continuously ringing, then that's exactly what it's trying to do, alright? Now this is going to sound crazy, but you need to pick up the phone and listen. Pay attention because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite this mantra. Your presence is not welcome here. You must depart immediately! Don't worry, you'll remember it when the time comes. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then keep quiet. Silence means it hasn't properly figured out the phone's location yet, and you don't want to give it any clues, all right? Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Let, then let me handle things for this hour. You should rest. We're trying to take the role, and so we do so. Telephone line. We we got to listen out. Whoa, hold on. Axe a lot, lady. You okay? Uh, let's talk. Why is she in here? Hello. Ma'am, this is the waiting area. Strange things that happen tonight, and I really need you to get back to your room. <laughs> My bad. I'll go back now. Yeah, so she was given the funny alcohol, right, guys? Or the funny medicine. I, ju I just basically put this... I, I just told him exactly what happened. Phone. Phone. Telephone. Where's it ringing from? Wait, hello? Yo, is it in here? Should we listen? You listen closely. You can hear a faint whispering on the other end of the line. Recite the mantra. We say it. You can sense that the presence on the other end of the phone has departed. Hey, so now we do this, we bounce between rooms. What's with our selective hearing? You hear that though? Barely hearing that, so we just keep our focus. What about that dude, man? Can I not save him anyway? That really sucks though. Hey ma'am, you hear the phone? Start screaming, I will come running back. And then, yeah, okay, we'll do the rest. Guys, yeah, I think I messed up that first one though. Maybe we gotta shut all the doors before the, uh, the monster guy comes in. What are these tablets? The pain meds are kept here. Pick up the meds, don't pick up. We'll leave them for now. Okay, that's worth knowing. So pain meds, uh, maybe we'll, they'll come of use as time goes on. Yo, is this demon gonna call or not? I'm bored. This guy only called once, he didn't call again. Interesting. 
thing. Now, this time, I'm going to try and close these doors. Maybe it'll keep them safe. So, definitely the uh, the 6A and the 3A rooms. We close those ones. Don't go wandering, please, ma'am. You stay in there tonight. Really can do with you not trying to fall down, you know? We don't want you dying. All right, I'm going to have to assume we're good because look at the time. We've got, like, one minute left. The time was 12 a.m. All the phones had been answered correctly. All the singular phone. Oh, wait. They, no way. It built. Oh, my gosh. It builds. I, I literally want to restart this game, guys. I think I might, I'm going to restart this game. Yeah, I'm going to restart this game. Okay, I can continue from 11. I just exited out and got back in. So now there's two things we do. All right, I'm on this. I got this. So we watch these windows too. Watch these windows too and we're good. Okay, we hear that ringing. Where's that coming from? Hold on. Okay, we see this. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. You listen closely. You don't hear anything from the other side. So say nothing. Yeah, skip your demon. We ain't giving you no power. Now the windows are closed for now. So let's just seal these doors up one by one. Okay, it was 12. All the windows have been closed. All the phones have been answered correctly. Why is she... Wait, by this point, the pain meds given to Mrs. Jane Doe earlier in the day had won... So, wondering if there was anything that could be done to help, she went to attempt inquiring about... <laughs> Hurting again? Anything do, please? Wait, oh, so it also pays off to talk to the people each night. Pain meds. This is what this is their use right here, guys. Pick up the meds. Yep. Take a pack of those. Just a singular one. So we gotta keep her topped up with the pain meds as well. So there you go, ma'am. Madam, I've brought you your scheduled pain medication. Yes, good. Enjoy it. Um by 12 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the phones have been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Now I shut every single door. Yeah, you storm on through. You wanna go in that kitchen? Look, all the doors are closed. <gasps> If the doors are closed, even our door has to stay shut, else he would come for us. Yeah, how's that wall looking, huh? How's that smelling? Clinical? Get out of here. You hate the hospitals, right? You hate this place, yeah. I break out that exit, you moron. So we did it. We're through. Let's do this. I I'm looking forward to this now, how it's going to develop. It's kind of fun. Here's what's going to happen this time. There's something about the demon's power that resonates with TV signals, right? It'll turn on any TV can manage to gain access to. They never show anything besides static once it takes control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off and that'll kick it out for a while. But don't leave any TVs that is controlling on, all right? It won't end well. I ain't a start anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, Doc. You take this hour and then I'll take the next. So TVs are now added to the mix as well. Uh, let's check around for patients. Just make sure they're not acting up. No television. No television in the waiting room, bro. You bore your patients to death. What the first supposed to be bringing them back to life, you know? What are you guys doing? So we look for the open window. Boom. Job done. Talk to these guys. Make sure they're good. <gasps> it's noon already. That's midnight, darling. Oh. <laughs> that's still doing it. Think. Ooh. Turn off. Turn off. What the freak? You don't want to watch none of your crappy TV demons. Wait. I can hear a telephone ring. Is it 7A? Let's go in here. Answer this. So. We hear it, so all we do, recite the mantra. Shut up, demon. No one wants to listen to your gobbledygook, okay? Goodbye. Man, I really wish we kept the wolf alive. He was such a sick-looking character. That could have been so much fun, but alas, here we are. Here, uh, best dressed in long time. So are you good? We don't need to give it any more meds. It seems like they only ever do one thing each night. Um, let me just pass this hour and see then. So the time was 1am, windows were closed, the televisions had been turned off, or the phones had been answered correctly, and then it arrived. Now, no one needed any help. The Axolot and the Octopus, they were in their respective rooms. Doors closed on those ones specifically, not the other ones. He goes down. I was worried. I thought I missed the door. Yeah, bounce off that wall with your face. Get out of here, please, demon. One more time. Yeah, yeah, this curse is some trash. Here's what's gonna happen next. The demon will try to draw power from any lights it can gain access to, right? You know it's inside a room trying to siphon power when the light starts flickering. When that happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. You're really going to need to use the space inside your mind to focus, so space bar is our button. You know it works when the light stops flickering, and make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, <laughs> Yeah, he can't, yeah, okay, we know. Stop being dramatic, lady. Let's get to work, let's get to work. So one of each thing, Check in here. TV. Shut the freak up. Turn you off. So, TV job is done. Look for those windows in case any are open. Done. 3A, ma'am, where are you? We don't see her in here. Get out of here. Recite the mantra. Goodbye, demon. Go away. I made that one up, but still, it seems to have just done the job. So, we are, we're killing it, guys. Now, we got to check bathrooms, too, just to be extra safe that no lights, like the flickering lights won't be in there. She's okay. Um, I think she might need her pain meds tonight, though. That's the only thing. Okay, in here. Ma'am, maybe don't be in here with the flickering light. Are you getting possessed? So, if you open our eyes. What the freak? More time? Wait. <gasps> close the door. Close the door. Matt, I, ho I hope you're good. She's closing her eyes too. Hold up. Wait. How do we know when it goes? There's no sound cue. Ooh. Wait. Oh, there's a visual cue though. Hey. Ma'am, please. Strange things are happening tonight, and I need you to get back to your room. 
my man! I'll go back now. Thank goodness. So there's one down. We've done all of the tasks, I think. Now let's just check on the octopus. So no pain meds for you. You don't need them. All right. Whoa, man. I think my head's finally starting to clear. That stuff works wonders. I'm telling you. I had a tooth pulled and didn't even feel a thing. Does that mean you might need pain meds at the next hour, perhaps? Will I remember that? Okay, one more round with the windows. It's uh, like 138. All windows are closed. All windows are closed. 3A, 6A, they're shut. Shut this door. Past that time, let's go. The time was 2 a.m. All the windows were closed. The television's off. None of the lights had been left flickering. All of the telephones had been answered correctly, and then it arrived. So, what are you about to do, huh? Bounce off a wall? Just as expected. Face plants a wall. Face plants a freaking wall, though. Uh, ma'am, this curse on the phone. Tell Mr. Vermont it's trash, okay? We're gonna sigh for more of his money. There's one final thing this demon is gonna try. Ritualistic candles. It has the power to manifest them inside this area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one, you extinguish it. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. It won't try anything new after it gets to this part, so you won't have to worry about any more new rules. Oh, and I almost forgot something. This part is important, too. Whatever you do, make sure you don't... Oh, don't what, madam? Hey, 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 hold up, guys. This is not good. This is not good. TV, get off. Freak up. Wait. <gasps> Whoa, all the TVs are on. Put the candle up. Whoa, this is kind of intense. Dude, it's trying it. It's trying everything. Hang on, man. We'll be there in a sec. Hold up. Which phone is ringing? Page it. Quick time, quick time. Let's go. Uh, you listen closely. Okay, just do it. Just do it. I, I don't even have time to read this. Let's go. So we've done that. All right, get out of here. So we've got to turn TVs off. We've got to do this. And then we've got to check windows after. Maybe the TVs is like the most important thing because that's like power being drawn always. I think we're good. Okay, all the TVs are off. All the TVs are off. Lights flickering. Get this done. The window can wait until the last moment. It really can. Let's get this light off or rather on. Let's see that. Hey, let's go. Let's go. We bust you up. Check around. Doors. I don't know if I need to check those. We got to check in with our patients just to be extra safe too and check for a window. Hey, Mav, window was open. What are you doing? She's snoozing it up. She's snoozing it up. So, good night, Mrs. Octopus. Hope your arm grows back overnight. Check this bathroom. No, open that freaking door. Nothing there. Hold on, hold on. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? She's awake. Um, no, she just sleeps upright. She's good. Hey, past that time. Past that time. Let's go. Let's go. 3 a.m. The time was 3 a.m. Windows have been closed. Television's off. None of the lights have been left flickering. Phones answered correctly. Candles extinguished. Then it arrived. Did it now, huh? What's it gonna do? We can hear it's getting well, much more aggressive. At least it feels like it is. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one, guys. Let's see what goes down. Same thing, same thing. No doors left open, so everyone gets out alive. If we just figured that out one phase earlier, we would have been good, man. Everyone would have been kept alive. So what now? Are we still on the phone? It's 3 a.m. They don't talk to one another. They don't, we just, we do the rounds again. We just got to be quick time with this thing. It's what it's all about. Look, power's being drawn. Flicker and light. Get it, get it, get it. Turn that. Yep. Shut up, shut up, eyes, our goggles. Hey, hey, let's go, hey. Phone is ringing, phone's ringing. That TV off. So here we go, answer the phone. She's sleeping, man, she's sleeping. Put that candle up, we gotta crouch for that one. Okay, we hear that. Don't hear anything, so say nothing. It's got, yeah, it's an easy game to get into a good rhythm with, it's fun. Presence departed, so what is left, really? We can't talk to them, they're still asleep. We look for a window that's been left open, maybe, right here. Get down, window's closed and are two patients. Um, wait, 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 buddy, buddy. Don't be blinking like that. Maybe I pressed space by Let me see. I did. Okay, I thought a demon was gonna possess me or something. Our time is up. Job's done. 4 a.m. It's the same thing then. It was 4 a.m. Windows good. Televisions, lights, phones answered correctly. Okay, so this is good. This is really good. He does the same thing. He doesn't get to us again. Let's go. Let's go. We left doors closed, right? Closed. And hold up, hold up. Closed. We're good. 5 a.m. Wait, 4 a.m.? I thought it was 5 Oh, okay, so now it's gonna be 5 a.m. You know, we're about to get it to do this, man. He's in my head. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm making sounds like that. That freaking TV up. What was going on with all of the TVs being on at the same time? Did we see that? That should not have been happening. That was, uh, that was next level possession stuff right there. Okay, we hear that. No ringing in there. We see you. Get repelled, demon. Why did my voice have- Why did my voice have to crack when I was trying to be epic to a demon? Like, come on. Like, there was every chance- what the freak? What the freak? Oh, we're on a time limit, guys. We gotta be quicker. We gotta be quicker. Maybe the candle. Put that candle out. Sniff that thing. Come on, come on. There you go, there you go. There you go. All right, uh... What? Wait, hold up. Can something break in and take us down? Okay, we're good. I've done all my tasks. I've done all my tasks. Maybe we check for any more open windows. Maybe open windows is becoming a much more higher priority on our list of things that we need to do. They were right next to her bed. That would have been a complete chaos if that went down. Okay, yep, yeah, they're all they're all still asleep. All the TVs are off. I don't feel like I've left anything out. 
done that. Um, I'll check in here. We're good. We're good. Past the time. Let's go. It was five. Yeah. Okay, so everything's good so far. Look at this. We're acing this. So the main objectives are good. The sun began to rise upon our little town, and the demon could not stay in this world much longer. It had already fulfilled its side of the Vermanda Pact, so it departed from this world back to where it once came from. Dr. Ada and Nurse Morton both survived. They were finally safe, but what about one of our patients, man? The backstory they gave him that actually kind of felt bad. However, sad music. Just bring it back. An investigation into the two different disappearances that happened that Wait, two? Oh, of course, it was the, the wolf and the wolf daughter, or the wolf wife, or whatever she was. An investigation that was compromised by Vermanda's influence. Despite their innocence and the lack of evidence, both Ida and Morton were charged and convicted with the disappearances. Without Dr. Ida to run things, the hospital that had faithfully served the community for decades stood abandoned. Unable to get the medical help that they so heavily relied upon, the town suffered. But none had suffered as much as Morton's daughter, who suddenly had to grow up without her father. She was alone in a completely unfamiliar town, although no fault of her own. The only other person who the truth was Hannah, but soon she had too suddenly disappeared, and upon searching her home, the only thing found was a strange lit candle. In the end, JP Vermander got to keep his extra 1%, and that's all that mattered. I'm gonna take this dude out, man! Straight on his forehead! Okay, so you know the thing we're about to replay this game through? To, uh, you know, beat this properly? Cause, yeah, we're diving back in. What the hell was that, dude? Did we see that? We saw that. I am, I am almost scared that my eyes are just playing tricks on me. There was something there, right? Behind the corner. That was awesome, if so. What a unique and, like, simplistic scare, man. That was actually kind of creepy. All right, guys, and we are back. So, in direct violation of the Vermanda Pact, no blood had been spilled that night. The most important part of the pact had not been fulfilled, which meant that the agreement was now null and void. After generations of being enslaved to the Vermanda family, the demon was finally free, and though it did not have much time left, it knew exactly how it wished to spend its final moments. Wait, well, this is about to be that good ended. Demon, you are welcome. Hospitality. Oh, he's been going back to the office and trying to make sure that he gets fired, you know? Yeah. You want to spin round, Mr. Vermont? Go meet your demon. Hannah, what in the world are you doing back here this early? Uh, Hannah? Yeah, go ahead and look at Hannah, sir. What do you see? Oh, it's you. Don't you have some work to be doing? What do you want? Why are you looking at me like that? Don't you go forgetting that you work for me, mister. I command you to get out of here! What if you listen to me, you stupid? Stupid what, huh? Stupid what? The angry howls of the demon echoed throughout the town that morning, and then the estate fell deathly quiet. As it turned out, Hannah hadn't left the Vermander estate that previous night. She had been far too tired to return home after feeding instructions through the telephone all night. Instead, she fell asleep in one of the manor's empty rooms. She was awakened by the awful noises emitting from upstairs. Hannah climbed the stairs and quickly made her way over to the office. Inside, there lie JP Vermander, beaten, unmoving, and absolutely mangled. But against all the odds, he was still alive. Hannah had a choice to make. A large part of her wanted to simply leave him there to give him the same disrespect and disregard that they had showed to others. She turned to leave, but deep down she knew that this wasn't the right thing to do. As bad as he was, she would not stoop to his level. So instead, she called for help, calling the very hospital that he tried to put a curse upon. Yeah, how's that feeling now, sir, huh? How's that feeling now? In an ironic turn of events, JP Vermander's life was saved at the very same hospital he had tried to rid himself of. Despite their rightful and justified anger at the man, Dr. Ida and Nurse Morton treated him no different than any other patient, and he was soon on the road to a full recovery. During his stay in the hospital, he was given a room near the front. Day after day, he watched the patients as they came and went. He watched as the hospital's only doctor and sole nurse did their best to keep every person that arrived, and as he watched, he realized something. Those confusing numbers on that little piece of paper actually meant something. Those numbers represented actual people, people's lives and emotions, people that just wanted to get the help that they deserved. It took a near-death experience at the hands of an angry demon and an intensive stay in the hospital, but JP finally felt something that no Vermander had felt for a very long time. Remorse. And he vowed he would do everything in his power and make amends. Good man. Good man. Sometimes it takes that for them to learn harshly, right? It corrected his mind. However, due to the pack being broken, most of the wealth and power it granted was soon lost to crippling death. Hospital's gone, guys. With no other options, JP sold off his estate and assets to pay his dues. And the last remaining bit of his fortune was donated to the hospital. 
As a sign of goodwill, Dr. Ida let him stay in one of their vacant rooms until he could get back on his feet. He is currently working as a food delivery driver to make ends meet, as he wasn't qualified for anything else. Though he does miss his money and his old lifestyle, in the end he's just thankful to still be alive. Good man, JP! Good man, JP, after all that. Morton settled into his new job as a nurse just fine. Despite the rough first night, he grew to love the strange new town and its people. In the end, he knew that it, the decision to move here was the best one for both him and his daughter. Ida is still the best and only doctor in town. She plans to use the donation money to renovate the hospital so that they can provide the best care possible for years ahead. And now that they had an actual budget, she decided to hire an accountant. Hey, Hanley Happer accepted the position as her old job was no longer available, so they're still linking up. She's got to finally have a boss that appreciates her hard work, and though it took a while, she did eventually forgive Amanda for all of his actions, I guess. I didn't read that last word. The hospital had a bright future ahead of it, and everyone was on good terms, and that's all that mattered. Clap it up, guys, man. Clap your hands together. That was a nice happy ending. That was cool. Every time I play one of this guy's games, I feel like I'm closing one of the storybooks, like just a child's book or something like that, but reliving that adventure, and it's really, really fun, man. We got three stars as well. Um, I guess it was none of the pack stuff being triggered, keeping everyone alive also, and getting like the best ending. That was everything we needed to do, so three stars. Let's get it. All right, then, guys. Well, that was the Vermanda Curse. Really fun game. A lot of story to this one, too, and despite the world that we lived in being kind of small with just the hospital, I really got to know those different characters, and by the end of it, I was really thinking like I gotta make sure I give these guys their pain meds and do the rounds to keep every single one of them alive especially the wolf character as I was playing through that they're, they're actually a super sweet couple like talking about how he won't be doing that again he apologizes how the kids will be sad so they have that lovely homely life so it was good that we kept him going and I'm glad I replayed this but alright though guys that was the Vibanda Curse if you do want to play this game for yourself you can check that link what you can check that link in the description down below I'm always linking the games but that's gonna be everything for this video right here and I really hope you did enjoy if you did why not drop me that like rating and hey if you're new around here why not subscribe for more videos just like this one right here. So thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Of course, I hope you did enjoy. And if you're someone that's acting up like JP Vermanda, I think it's time you learn from this one and change the way you're thinking. I'll see you on the next one.